We are Andrew and Leanne, and in 2021, we sold our car, packed our bags and quit our jobs to buy a one-way ticket to travel the world. After leaving Riley, we made our way to Bangkok, ready to board our flight to finally leave Thailand. Good afternoon from here in Krabi Bus Terminal. This morning, we jumped a long tail boat from Riley to Ao Nang Pier. And then from Ao Nang Pier, a car picked us up and dropped us off here. We now have an hour's wait until our 15 hour or so overnight bus arrives and takes us to Bangkok. Now we've looked at pictures online of this bus and it is supposed to be a huge 32 seater VIP bus, which apparently from what we've seen online has huge reclinable seats so you can actually sleep lying down and some of them actually have TVs in the back of the headrest, so we'll see. We didn't actually pay very much for this, so I'm a little bit dubious. But, in other news, I just paid to go into the toilet here at Krabby Bus Terminal, and the sweetest old man was selling coffee and snacks and stuff, and he charged us 10 baht for this little cup of coffee, and it is delicious. And just in case you're interested, the tickets from Riley to Bangkok cost us 1,200 baht each, but that included the pickup from Ao Nang Pier and the private transfer to the bus station, the overnight bus to Bangkok, and dinner tonight. So let's see what this bus is like. We'll update you when we get on it. Oh, it smells really good on here. It smells so good. <laughs> so we've just got onto the bus and we get some free water and randomly a black sesame milk. Big seats, which recline, I think. Let me see. Do they recline? Ooh, ooh. Your legs come up, your legs come up. Ooh. Ooh. That's nice. We get air conditioning, little lights, a cup holder, a blanket, and I think there's a charger down here. Oh yeah, there is. Also, we don't have our own TVs on the back of the seats. However, there is one giant TV at the front of the bus. are a bit big for the chair. <laughs> yeah, the headrest comes up. Nice. I actually think I might sleep on this. We're off. <laughs> Bye Krabby. So this will be fun. Probably 12 to 16 to 18 hours on a bus. Although we are leaving pretty much on time. I think it's only like five past four now. So not too bad yet. <laughs> Bye Krabby! <laughs> Excuse the, uh, the hair, it's not very comfortable against the headrest so I've taken it up to the bottom. I'm just going to try my black sesame soy drink. It's like that black sesame shaved ice that we've had a couple of times back in the UK. It smells quite bad though. Is it nice warm? warm? I mean, it is a little bit warm. It's not bad though. Six and a half hours later. So we just stopped for a quick 20 minute break and the whole queue of people from the bus just started lining up at this one food store. So we just joined in and then we realised that we didn't have our ticket so we couldn't get our free meal so I had to run all the way back to the bus. Got the ticket, went back to the food place, got our food, which was great. There was like, there was like a buffet. There was like curries and vegetables and rice and all kinds of things. Andrew had my portion because it was a bit spicy, but I got us some fresh fruit and some dried kiwi slices. We've been on the road for about six hours already so far. And I think we have another, another 10 hours to go. I must admit, 
it's definitely not as comfortable as the trains. My back, my back is falling to pieces. <laughs> but it's, it's really not that bad. No, nah, for the price, it's incredible. Really, you can't complain. Catch up with you soon. Good morning from our apartment here in Bangkok. Sorry that we didn't film more of the bus journey. When we got back from eating uh, and got onto the bus, almost immediately they turned all the lights off and the lights weren't turned on again until about two minutes before we arrived in Mo Chit Station in Bangkok. So yeah, the bus got us there at just gone 5 a.m and we made our way to a taxi outside of the station because they're generally cheaper than the taxis that try and hustle you as soon as you get off the train. So we found a taxi driver, threw our bags in the back of his car, showed him where we were going. He did not speak a word of English, but we finally managed to explain where we were going and he nearly crashed once on the way back to the hotel. Um, but we made it here safely, we made it to our apartment uh, it's a nice big apartment for the price that we're paying. We got back to the apartment about quarter to six in the morning and we were absolutely exhausted. So we both brushed our teeth, had a quick shower and jumped into bed. <laughs> and it is now 11 a.m. So it's time for coffee. being back in Bangkok I'm not gonna lie all the different food options you've got here is like unbelievable in Riley we were eating so unhealthy everything seemed to be fried whereas in Bangkok you get a lot of little food stores and they sell fruit and things and they were like a daily part of my life when I was in Bangkok and I really miss the fruit stalls also there weren't any Japanese restaurants in Riley now I don't blame them for that Thai food is amazing but it seems to be quite unhealthy and heavy. <laughs> so we're going to get shabu because it's quite light and fairly healthy. I'm really looking forward to it. So, had a bit of a crisis. We ordered this standard buffet, which has arrived but the guy showed us a menu as well and showed us a QR code. We thought that we had to order everything individually for the buffet, so we nearly ordered pretty much double of everything <laughs> and we nearly had way too much food, but it wouldn't have been charged anything extra, we just don't want to waste anything, so. Sirikit Park. Queen Sirikit is the queen mother of Thailand and she's still alive to this day. Behind me is one of the more interesting fruit trees that we've come across in Thailand. We were sitting outside a bakery in Koh Lanta when we saw this fruit tree and we asked the people inside what's this fruit tree because all the fruit was still on it. It hadn't been ransacked by monkeys, people weren't eating the fruit. And they didn't know what it was, so we did a little bit of digging, a little bit of research, and it turns out that it's actually called the sea mango. Now, looks can be deceiving. It does look like a regular mango tree. However, this one is very, very poisonous. One little bite of this will probably kill you, and it's more commonly known as the suicide tree. It's been used in homicides quite a lot, and it's also known as the pong pong tree. Yeah, you don't want to go eating this fruit if you're in Asia. So we're just walking here through the park and all these flowers are falling to the ground almost like cherry blossom in Japan. These beautiful delicate pink flowers just falling from this tree behind me and there's people here all taking like photos probably for Instagram and it's just really really pretty. We're gonna try and get away from the main road though somewhere a little bit quieter. So we've come here armed with 10 bats worth of fish food and uh, we've been looking for a good place to feed the fish since we came to the park.
and I think we found a good place to feed the fish. Good morning once again from Bangkok. Not only is today our final day here in Bangkok, it's also our last day in Thailand. It's been absolutely amazing, but it's finally time to move on to somewhere new. And tomorrow we actually board our flight to our fourth country of the trip so far. So on today's agenda, we have three main tasks. First job, we have to go and get COVID tests to fly to our destination tomorrow. Second job, we want to visit Chinatown because somehow we've been in Bangkok three times and we've never been to Chinatown. And the third task, we want to visit the first Michelin starred street food vendor, and that's here in Bangkok. So we're gonna try and find her. So tests are done. Honestly, they weren't that bad at all. They tickled a little bit, that's about it. Step one complete, results complete, and we are both, drum roll, negative. <laughs> Which means? We are off to, we're not telling you yet, you'll have to find out. See you in Chinatown. I know I sound really pretentious, but this is like, I am in my element. I do this all the time when I'm at home. Uh, I order Chinese tea from a shop in, in Camden in London and it's been a big part of my life for a little while now so this is a real treat coming to Chinatown in Bangkok to a little local tea store and trying an aged white tea. I'm so excited. I'm really enjoying this. Um, it's making me feel super relaxed, super happy and if you look outside the door everyone's moving really fast and like just running everywhere and it looks really hectic and hustle and bustle and in here it's really quiet, it's really cool, tea is really good, the man's really nice, good day. So we're just finishing up our little tea session here in Double Dogs. If you're in Chinatown in Bangkok you probably should come to this tea shop, it's one of the only ones that's open where you can like sit and drink tea, it's really peaceful outside like i said before is just going nuts at the minute there's people screaming shouting walking around cars are going mad and this is like a little haven space so if you're in bangkok in chinatown come to double docks one thing i love about bangkok and chinatown is how quick all the stalls set up in this place like as we were sitting tea we were watching a group of people dragging this metal box and within five minutes, it was set up into this restaurant. It's not really a restaurant, it's a street stall. Into this street stall that has, that has a queue most of the time down the road. They're so efficient, so loud, and whatever they're selling looks amazing. I just saw this lady pushing a trolley. She nearly went past me. And I managed to grab her for 25 baht, which is about 50p. We got these gorgeous little coconut custard dessert things. And they're a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. They're super, super nice. 25 baht, not bad. Leanne only gave me one of those custard things. I turned away for one second and turned back and a lot of them had gone. 
happens more than you think. So we're now on to our third task of the day. We have managed to take our COVID test. We visited Chinatown and now we're heading to J5, which is the first street food vendor with a Michelin star in the whole of Thailand. We've got a 22 minute walk to get there. And then apparently there is at least an hour's wait normally to get a table because she is that busy. Just look at this place now. As the sun starts to go down, this place just gets even more crazy. Just look at it. So we're outside of J5, which as I say, is the first Michelin starred street food vendor in all of Thailand. There is a massive queue. The entire restaurant is full and we've just put our names down on the list and we are 10th in queue. So we're gonna be here for a while waiting to be able to sit down. We've just waited outside for an hour to get a table in this place because we didn't pre-book. We finally sat down, ordered some drinks, and the woman said, it might be another hour before we get our omelet. But I'm not mad. This woman has not stopped once since we got here. And it's, it's just been non-stop. So I'm really excited about this. So we've waited an hour and a half for this crab omelet. Look at the amount of crab meat inside of this thing. I have never seen so much crab meat on a single dish in my entire life. And it smells, it smells divine. I have never smelled anything like this before. I can't wait to taste this. I'm gonna try it first without any sauce. And already in the first mouthful, it's, it's just, it's more crab than it is egg. That crab is by far the nicest crab I've ever tasted in my life. It just tastes so fresh. You can taste the sea in it. It's not too salty. It's nice and sweet. And the egg on the outside is actually really crispy. It's just, it's just perfect. It's expensive for an omelet. This omelet alone costs us 1,000 baht or around 22 British pounds. But it's so good, nowhere have I ever been able to go to a Michelin star restaurant for such a low price before in my life? And um, I'm gonna get Leanne to try a bit as well now. Leanne doesn't normally like crab, but I'm gonna see what she thinks of this. Okay. Oh, oh my God. That doesn't even taste like crab that I've had in the past. It's kind of like a really, really tasty meaty fish. It's kind of like a mix between chicken and fish. Really good. Let's try it with a bit of the egg. That's amazing. There is so much crab in this. Like there is like a paper thin layer of egg and the rest is crab. <laughs> amazing. Really good. Well that was absolutely incredible. Uh, I think all in all we ended up waiting about an hour and a half for our meal. Definitely worth the wait. It was the best crab meal I've ever had in my life. Yeah, so we're just heading back to the hotel now. We have a lot still to do before the morning. We've got to do laundry, we've got to pack, and we've got a few things to print off. So I think we'll see you back at the hotel.